Korean-made LTD guitars. You guys know I love them. Well, today I'm hot riding one like I've never done before. A single humbucker, 24 frets, a gold Floyd Rose, and of course, a kill switch. This might be my favorite guitar I've ever done. Be sure to hit the subscribe button right now and hit the bell so you'll get a notification each time a new episode is released. This is Trash to Thrash. For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome custom guitars. Now, I'm turning my passion into a profession by seeking out old, beat-up guitars and giving them new life, all while trying to make a profit. I'll be searching everywhere for used gear that I can re-fret, rewire, repaint, whatever it takes to make it a real shredder. This is Trash to Thrash. Hello everybody, welcome back to Trash to Thrash. I'm your host, Mark Murray, and I welcome you to the Season 4 premiere. When I started this show, it was all about buying guitars for a good deal and fixing them up to flip them and make it into a business. Now that business plan has expanded to rebuilding customer guitars as well, which is the majority of work I do nowadays. But today we're getting back to the reason I started this show. I'm going to be rebuilding a guitar I bought locally, came up with a concept, and just went for it. So this is a non-commissioned shop build. If you go back to episode one of the show, I was talking about decking out a guitar with gold hardware, saying it was like the Midas touch, or in my case, the Murray touch. Well today we're bringing that back because today's guitar is going gold. The guitar has had quite the tail. I found this guitar on Facebook Marketplace in February 2021 and messaged the guy immediately about it. It was listed at $200 and it came with an ESP hard shell case, so I jumped on it as fast as I could. All right, well, it's a Sunday and I just finished spraying clear on a couple guitars. Still actually haven't even changed my clothes yet. And this morning I was over on Facebook Marketplace, which is a place a lot of people have told me they've got great deals on guitars at. And I found a great deal on a 1998 LTD M100. And I've got the exact same guitar, so I know it's a great guitar. Just pulled up to the place. Hopefully this deal isn't too good to be true. Let's go find out. Okay, I just checked this thing out with him. Let me show you what we got. Got the ESP hard shell case with it. Look at this beauty. It's a 1998 LTD M2. So some people call them M100s. Man, this thing is in great condition. Jeez, look at the point. No, no chips on the point. I've got basically this exact same guitar. Notice there's no model number on the 12th fret because this is before they called them M100s, M200s. This is like the first production year that was shipped over to the US. Yeah, it's got the same bridge as mine. Wow, this is a trip. Beautiful condition, wow. This guy took really good care of it. Beautiful case too, man, what a deal. I've got some ideas for this one already. Do you guys like this type of live footage? I started yet another YouTube channel where I'm posting more of this raw style content. This channel you're watching now, the official Guitar Guts channel, will be exclusively higher produced content like this show, and product reviews, performances, and demos. Going forward, the second channel will feature vlogs, raw footage, behind the scenes videos, and Sunday Morning Shred, which returned this last week on Sunday. There's a brand new episode out now you can go watch right after this. I also have an update to the LTD Explorer Saga coming this Monday where I'll be showing you the cost breakdown of rebuilding the guitar, and I'll fill out a mock estimate showing you what I would charge a customer if they brought me that exact guitar. Most of the guitar's cost is going to be labor, so I'll be tracking my hours as I rebuild it, and you'll see my cost for the rebuild, and how long it actually takes me to get the guitar rebuilt. So go subscribe to Guitar Guts 2, the link is in the description below. I've already started working on the Explorer, and later in this episode I'm going to show you guys what I've done to it so far, and going forward each week on Trash to Thrash, I'll give you guys updates on where the Explorer is at. Be sure to stick around until the end of the episode to find out how to buy the guitar featured in this episode, and to see a preview of the guitar in next week's episode. Alright, now let's go over the plan for this LTD M100. The first thing we'll be doing to this guitar is stripping it down and filling the neck pickup cavity and the unneeded controls. We're going with just a single humbucker on this guitar. Next, we're going to refinish it in a pink to purple burst and add black crackle over that. Then we're going to wire up the Seymour Duncan Screamin' Demon pickup through a preamp and add a Tessie kill switch with a purple LED. Next, we're going to add this really cool Q Parts volume knob with a purple inlay. For the bridge, we're going with the Gold Floyd Rose 1000 series with FU Tone noiseless springs. And then we'll finish it off with Gold Goto tuners and Dunlop strap locks. 
Now that's the plan for the guitar, but that wasn't the original plan. We'll get back to what the original plan was in just a minute. But for now, we'll hand this guitar off to my shop assistant, Ryan, who's gonna disassemble the guitar, sand it, and then start filling the neck cavity. Basically, he's gonna get it all prepped for painting. To fill the neck cavity in, we're gonna start here at the bandsaw by cutting a piece of wood that's gonna fill in the neck cavity. On this guitar, when we measured the depth of the neck pickup cavity, it was actually deeper than the wood that we use to fill them normally. So we'll be cutting two pieces, one piece to put underneath, and then this piece for the top. For this piece here, we trace the shape of the actual hole in the guitar so we can get the wood to fill up as much space as possible. When you fill in a cavity on a guitar like this, you need to make sure that you also use a hard wood. This is red oak and you can pick it up right at your local hardware store. If you try to use a softer wood like pine or even plywood, that spot will be more susceptible to chips and dings. And with the way that wood naturally expands and contracts due to temperature fluctuations, it's not gonna expand and contract the same way that the guitar's body would. Now we're gonna glue these pieces in, starting with the smaller piece, and then we'll insert the top piece which is made to fit the body a little tighter. After that, we'll use a little extra wood glue to fill in some of the gaps. Then we'll use a cardboard square to skim off the excess glue. You don't wanna just leave it puddled up on the top like that. Now this guitar has been in the works for quite a while, and that's because this guitar took forever to fill the neck cavity. Here I can see we are using Elmer's wood filler to fill the gaps around the edge of the pickup. Elmer's wood filler is good for certain things, and this is not one of them. Over time, this product kept sinking, and we had to keep refilling it, and then resanding it. It would look perfect, and then we'd come back a week later, and you could see the product had shrunk more. So, we ended up using Bondo, and Bondo worked way better. Bondo is my favorite product to use to fill gaps and holes like this, because it dries fast, it dries really hard, and it's really durable. Whenever I post guitars that have one pickup in them, I always get asked, why would somebody only want one pickup in their guitar? It's the same kind of thing for a single volume knob. It's all about simplicity. It's about not having to fuss with anything. Having a bare bones, but fully functional guitar with no extra bells or whistles. But it's also about the look. You don't see a ton of guitars with a single humbucker in them. It looks clean. It looks custom. And for people who play a lot of metal, they don't always need a neck pickup. For many years, I used to play only the bridge pickup and I would never switch to clean. I loved fast, heavy metal. I liked screaming vocals, so if there's clean guitars and singing, that wasn't metal enough for me. Now when I say that, I think that's kind of ridiculous. For my taste, I love different tones, I love a neck pickup, and I love clean tones. I think the dynamic from super heavy to clean and smooth back and forth is such a roller coaster emotionally. So for me, if I were to keep this guitar, I'd want a neck pickup in it. And believe me, I thought about it. I considered rerouting the neck pickup in this guitar and keeping it for myself, but I'm not gonna. Unless whoever buys it wants a neck pickup in it, then I definitely would. So I get why people like single humbucker guitars. They're no nonsense, straightforward, and ready to shred. For me, I do prefer a neck pickup, but I definitely don't need the tone knob. What do you guys think about all this? Would you ever play a guitar with a single humbucker in the bridge? Or do you love the neck pickup too much like I do? What about the tone knob? Do you guys use the tone knob? I wonder how many guitar players prefer just a single pickup and a volume. A few minutes ago, I mentioned to you guys that this guitar originally had a different plan than what I had showed you. So now that it's all prepped for paint, let's hit the paint booth and I'm gonna show you guys what the original idea was. Do you all remember the Lizard LTD that I showed you on the season two finale? That was originally the paint job that was going on this guitar. So here you can see I'm spraying the yellow on in the center of the body. Then I added the green around the edges. I had this concept in my head for quite a while and this was the original guitar I was gonna put it on. I thought that this paint job would be so cool on a single humbucker LTD. But when I sprayed the crackle on, there were certain spots on the guitar surface that just didn't crackle. And there's a lot of variables that go into making a good crackle pattern. And for some reason this day, it just didn't happen. But I was determined to do a guitar like this, so, I actually had another guitar that was nearly identical in the shop, hanging up, sanded, and prepped to paint right now. It was an HSH LTD, and I ran in there, grabbed that one, and threw the lizard paint job on that guitar instead. Originally, that HSH was gonna get the purple crackle finish that's gonna go on this guitar. At this point, I had set the guitar aside for about a month to let the paint fully cure before we started sanding on it again. So then I brought it back into the spray booth and laid down a base coat of flat black. After giving it another level sanding, then I started to throw on some paint. I started with a pink in the center, then I switched to a light purple, 
and then I finished it off with a dark purple. So it's gonna burst from a hot pink in the center to a dark purple on the edges and dark purple on the whole back. And of course we're matching the headstock on this one. I did three base coats of color on this guitar, trying my best to do a very similar burst on all three coats. Then came the crackle. For crackling, I use Montana Crackle because it comes in an aerosol can and it's easy to find. Here in the US, I think this is the only stuff that you can get. If you guys know any other types of crackle that comes in an aerosol can, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to know. Alright guys, most of you have probably seen the LTD Explorer saga I recently went through. If you haven't, you should go back and watch the videos on it. But I recently purchased an LTD Explorer on eBay. After I paid, the seller refused to ship it. We went back and forth a bit. They wanted more money. I said no. And then they eventually did ship it. Well, I'll be rebuilding that one to keep for myself, so each week here on the show, I want to show you what's going on with it. This week I got it disassembled and started to assess the damage. This is the LTD Explorer I recently picked up on eBay. You can see it's in terrible condition, and it's going to take a lot of work to get this thing looking good again. I want it to look like it just came out of the factory. That means it's going to need a refinish, a refret, rewire, basically everything. As we always do, the first step is to disassemble the guitar. Which, for this one, I'm actually doing because this is a personal project of mine and I really want to take my time and do it all myself. So I started by removing the pickups. And next I'm going to pull out the rest of the electronics. And as I flip this thing over, it's such a beast, I decide I'll just pull the neck off right now. That's going to make it way easier to maneuver here on my workbench. Alright, now we'll get the output jack out of there and remove the control cavity cover. And ah, cool, we found an old sock in here that I will not be touching. I should probably be wearing gloves right now. This guitar came with the old school EMGs, so they're hardwired in. There's no plug and play like the new ones, so I'm going to have to bust out the soldering iron to take the rest of the electronics out. Now the paint, or whatever it is that's dripped all over the front of this, has glued some components to the guitar, so I'm going to use this chisel blade to try to get some of this stuff off. I was really curious to see if this would also take up this weird black paint that dripped all over the front of it. And it actually does. They didn't prep the paint well, so it comes off actually pretty easily. And this was oddly satisfying to do. I'm glad this worked because I was not looking forward to trying to sand this off evenly. It can be difficult to sand a surface like this that's so uneven, so it was quite a relief that it came off like this. The next thing I did was pulled the bushings for the two pneumatic bridge. I've got the first two pulled here. And now I have the second two for the actual two pneumatic piece to pull. The full video of me disassembling this guitar and talking you through it in real time is up on my Patreon page now. This week's video has all kinds of tips like removing hard to remove knobs, how to remove these bushings, and I go over what tools I like to use to make this job faster. So now the body's basically all disassembled. I just need to finish scraping this paint off the front and then move on to the neck and the headstock. Scraping the rest of the body here took me about 10 minutes or so. And now we're on to the neck and the headstock. For this, I'll be popping out the nut and removing the tuners. When I removed the nut, I had to scrape out some glue from the neck. And now this guitar is disassembled. I'll leave the fret pulling for a later date. So far, I have an hour into this guitar. Earlier this week on my second channel, I posted a video where I did a cost breakdown of exactly what it's gonna cost me to rebuild this guitar. And I show you what I would charge a customer if they were to bring this guitar to me to get fully restored. Then I went on eBay and Reverb and looked at live and recently sold listings to see if my price matches up with the market. Now go check that video out. It's part 4 to the LTD Saga and it's available only on the Guitar Guts second channel, which is linked down in the description below. If you want to follow along even closer to the LTD Explorer rebuild, go sign up to any tier of my Patreon page. I'll be showing you guys longer edits of the Explorer rebuild. This week, part 1 of the rebuild is up and I talk about disassembling guitars and show you some tips and tricks plus a closer look at the tools I used. If you've wanted to rebuild a guitar but don't know where to start, now's your time. You can watch each week and then complete that step on your project guitar. I'll walk you through it and we'll rebuild our guitars together. Now go sign up to any tier of my Patreon page to get started. Now I love the way the crackle turned out this time, and it's ready for some clear coat, but first it's going to need a headstock logo. I decided to go with silver. LTD logos have a shadow on them. This guitar is going to have gold hardware, so I considered maybe a gold shadow on the logo. But ultimately, I think a black shadow on the logo to kind of match the crackle might look better. I make these labels on my Cricut machine, and then I transfer them over like this using transfer tape. I always like to have a headstock of the same brand next to me when I'm doing this so I can get the placement exact. 
For the shadow, I do it by hand. It's a lot easier to line these pieces up manually rather than try to transfer them over using transfer tape. Now the body and the headstock are ready to go back into the spray booth for some clear coat. I'll be using Spray Max High Gloss Glamour for this guitar. All the paints and supplies that I use on this guitar are listed down in the description below, so if you want to buy any of this stuff, you can get it in the links down there, and it actually helps support my channel. Amazon gives me a small commission every time you guys buy something using my links down below. It doesn't cost you anything extra, Amazon takes the hit on it because I'm referring you, so they're rewarding me a little bit. Alright guys, I've sprayed a ton of clear on this guitar, and now it's time to start level sanding it and getting it ready for a mirror finish. Right now it looks super shiny, but you can see there's a lot of texture still from the crackle paint, so I'm actually going to level sand this thing with 600 grit sandpaper, then bring it back out in the spray booth, spray another round of clear on it, and then I'm going to do the final level sanding, polish sanding, and buffing. I've already level sanded the back, you can see here, so it's nice and even. But if I start sanding with all my different grits of sandpaper to start getting it ready for polishing, I don't think this is going to be enough clear coat there. I can still see a little texture in a couple spots and to get it real flat and real shiny, I'm definitely going to want to spray some more clear before I start doing my main sanding. The sandpaper I'm using here is 600 grit Super Acelix made by Eagle Abrasives. It has a little interface pad here and I have the, the handle that you can buy separately. And like I was saying, there's some texture on this crackle still, so what I'm gonna do is start right on one corner, and I'm gonna start to get it leveled out. So then when I go to spray some more clear coat on it, it's gonna be completely flat to start, and then I'm just gonna build up a super thick, beautiful clear coat to start working with, to polish. As I'm working, you can see the different levels of the surface. The parts that are looking dull and flat, like over here, those are flattened out. But where everywhere you can see the brighter purple, that means it's a low spot that the sandpaper isn't hitting when you go over. And you'll want to keep going until those are gone. That's why it's really important to put a really thick clear coat on it so you have plenty to sand through. Now I can tell we're starting to get kind of close, so I'm going to wipe this down. And when you get down here, you can see in here, it's starting to get pretty smooth, pretty flat. Around this edge, it definitely still has quite a bit of grooves over here. But if you look at it, you can see all this is pretty flat now. All right, now it is all leveled. You can see the whole front is all matte looking. The sides, even that little edge right there. The whole thing is nice and level and ready to go back out to the spray booth and get some more clear coat. And we're back in the booth. Last time out, I used a full can of that Spray Max Clear, and this time I'm doing the same thing. Another full can. I'll be adding it to the headstock as well. And wow, that looks awesome. Then just like before, there was lots of sanding, and after that, there was more sanding, and then there was even a little more sanding after that. Then it was finally perfectly flat and ready to polish. For this guitar, I used my old favorite polish, Meguiar's 105 and 205. I've covered my sanding and buffing process a few times, but we're gonna have plenty of high gloss guitars coming in season four, so I'll show it again soon. This thing's looking awesome, but now it's time to start reassembling it. With reassembly comes new parts, and with new parts comes a million tiny little modifications to make things fit. Like here, I needed to open up the bridge cavity a little bit so the Seymour Duncan would fit in, so I reached for the Dremel and that made it easy. Next we went over to the drill press to add the hole for the kill switch, and the hole for the volume pot. Then I laid in a piece of copper shielding into the control cavity. Then I dropped in the Tessie kill switch. I went with the gold kill switch with a purple LED, so it's gonna look so awesome in this guitar. And now is the perfect time to tell you guys that this episode of Trash to Thrash is sponsored by Tessie. Tessie makes awesome stuff. I went with them on this guitar because they have a really good selection of different colored kill switch bezels and LEDs. I couldn't find a gold kill switch with a purple LED anywhere. And of course, Tessie's got it. Check out their website, tessieswitch.com. It's linked down in the description below as well. They make all kinds of different cool kill switches. They make the EVH style kill switches, like the big ones that light up. They make the 16 millimeter more common ones with a metal housing and LED or non-LED. They also have the arcade button kill switches, which are so cool. I have one of them in one of my guitars and everybody always notices it. And one of my favorite things about Tessie is if you use my discount code, you'll get 15% off. So at checkout, enter guitar guts, all one word, and you'll get 15% off your order of kill switches. But they don't only have kill switches over at tessieswitch.com. They have all kinds of really cool guitar accessories. They have custom knobs, pickup covers, switch tips, a ton of cool stuff. So go check them out. 
Enter Guitar Guts at checkout for 15% off, and you'll be happy you did. All right, next I'm going to install the tremolo claw. Then I flip the guitar back over to the front and started installing the bridge posts. I want to see what this thing looks like with that gold Floyd Rose in it. When I went to go install the new pickup ring, it didn't match up with the original hole. So, time to fill the holes, and that's not a big deal. It really only takes a couple minutes. But like I said, there's always a million little things you gotta do. Now I got that awesome Q-Parts knob installed, and I'm gonna install a set of Dunlop strap locks. You gotta have strap locks on your guitar. In my opinion, that's the first mod you should be doing to your guitar. Now I'm gonna cut down the toothpicks that I used to fill the holes for the pickup ring, and I'm gonna cut them flush using an X-Acto knife with a chisel blade. All right, now we got that Floyd Rose dropped in. It looks awesome, and I'm ready to drop in that Seymour Duncan Screaming Demon pickup. For this guitar, I wanted to go with a different pickup than the standard EMG81 that I always go with. In my personal collection, I own quite a few guitars with Seymour Duncan pickups, and I love them. So for this guitar, I chose the Seymour Duncan TB12 Screaming Demon, which is the George Lynch signature pickup. I actually have the same pickup in one of my Jacksons, and I've had it for over a decade in a few different guitars. I love this pickup. It's made for high output lead guitar playing and progressive metal. So it sort of has a heavier tone when compared to other Seymour Duncan passive pickups, but it also has a more articulate style to it. So when you go to play leads, it really cuts through. After finishing the headstock and unwrapping the neck, I was looking at the frets and they weren't horrible, but for how awesome this guitar is turning out, they don't look good. So instead of a full refret, I'm just gonna level them and then recrown them. So to start, I've taped off all the frets and now I'm using the truss rod to straighten out the neck. That'll give me my best shot at getting these frets perfectly level. To level the frets, I'll be using this Stu Max 6 inch fret leveler. Working on frets is one of the trickier things about working on guitars, and I'll go a little more in depth into fretting next week on the show, because next week's guitar is gonna get plenty of fret work. The frets are basically level now, but I'm gonna go through with the rocker and see if there's any high spots anywhere and sand those frets down. The fret leveling file that I used leaves the frets pretty rough, so I'll also do a quick sanding on all the frets just to smooth them out a little bit. When I get to the end of the fretboard, I'll just quickly check the whole thing again, see if there's any spots that still seem a little high, and then I'll bring them down. Okay, everything's looking pretty good on here, and now it's time to use my crowning tool to go over the frets and give them a nice round shape again. Then I'll come back with this end file and just touch up the ends and make them look a little clean and round it off. Like I mentioned earlier, the files leave the frets pretty rough looking, so you want to use different grits of sandpaper, just like you do when you paint, to smooth them out and give them a polished look. Here I started with 600 and real lightly gave them almost a polishing. Then I've jumped all the way to some 2000 grit sandpaper and got it looking pretty good. It feels pretty nice, feels pretty smooth. And the last but not least, I'm going to hit it with some 4 aught steel wool. After I set the neck aside, you could see right where it was sitting. This is all metal dust and metal flakes, so if you're working on a towel or something, you want to replace the towel and get a nice clean surface. There's a few random scuffs on the headstock of the guitar and on the back of the neck, so I'm going to sand those off real quick. These were just some real light things on the surface of the neck, so I used some 2000 grit sandpaper to remove them without taking the finish off the neck. Now I got the workspace cleaned up, all the metal shavings are gone, and we're going to oil the fretboard. This one looked particularly thirsty. I don't think the previous owner has ever oiled the fretboard. He told me he owned it since middle school, which is almost 25 years ago, and it sat in a case most of the time. So that's actually pretty good for the fretboard. At least it was in a case. I started by running a huge bead of lemon oil down the length of the fretboard and then rubbing it in and it's gonna help me clean the dirt off the fretboard as well. Then I reapplied it, rubbed it in and let that soak for a little while. Next came the wiring, which was a little bit tricky, but not too hard. This guitar is equipped with an internal preamp and a push-pull volume pot. So you'll actually be able to pull up the volume knob to activate a switch that will turn on the preamp. That looks pretty clean. For having a kill switch and a preamp and a push-pull, that's pretty good wiring. And now the last step of wiring, connecting the output jack to the body. Of course, we're going gold hardware, so we got the gold football-shaped output jack. Now we'll get the neck reattached to this thing, and we'll get this bad boy strung up. And now a quick setup just to get it all playing right, really just to get it close. I'll sit down on my amp, jam around on it for a while, and get it real dialed in. Now are you guys ready to see this thing and to hear it? Be sure to hit that like button right now.
What'd you guys think about the episode and that beautiful purple crackle LTD? Let me know in the comments. I gotta say, this is my favorite build I've done yet. If you're watching this episode right when it comes out and you want to buy this guitar, the guitar will be automatically listed at guitarguts.com in the guitars for sale section, right when this episode ends. Link is in the description. There's only one available, so you better get there quick if you really want it. Remember, you could always send your guitar into me to be rebuilt, so send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com for an estimate, and be sure to subscribe to the new second Guitar Guts channel. If you guys enjoyed the episode, hit that like button and go share it with all your friends. That helps a ton. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon. Rock on, my friends. Next week on Trash to Thrash, I got this 1994 Jackson JSX concept body in a bundle deal on eBay a while back. It's a really uncommon guitar. They only made them for one year. Eventually, I found a neck for it and decided to do a finish on it I've never tried before. This thing is going to be insane. But first, it's going to need a refret, refinish, new hardware, and of course, some new pickups. Hit the bell to turn on notifications and be sure to tune in next Thursday to see it.